Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to my channel. This is Friday Sewing School. On Fridays, we um, have a basic sewing school running. This is lesson 1.3. Uh, there's a link to the playlist below if you'd like to start at the beginning. Um, this, this lesson is all about needles and thread. Um, so before we get on to needles, let me just point out to you the various parts of the needle so that you can understand how each needle is different. I'm gonna put up a graphic here. Um, so this is looking at the needle from the front side, the part that's facing you, the rounded part that goes up in the machine is called the shaft. Below that is a triangular portion called the shoulder. And then you have the groove, which helps guide the thread, the eye, which is where the thread goes through, and it all comes down into a point and then a very tip. Now looking at the back side of the needle, you see the back side of the shaft, it's flat. You see the shoulder, the back side of that is also flat most times. The back of the groove is called the blade. And then there's something called a scarf, which um, comes into play when you get into embroidery needles and that kind of thing. You have an eye, a point, and a tip. So you know what we're talking about as we refer to the different parts of the needle. So now the types of needles. Um, first thing I would like to just um, tell you that the first suspect when you have any kind of sewing trouble at all should be your needle. The first, um, if you have any bunching of thread underneath, breaking of thread, skipping stitches, any sewing mishap um, having to do with the machine, First suspect, change your needle. Uh, a lot of times they can be nicked, they can be slightly bent, they can be old. Um, you wanna use a new needle for every uh, major project. Um, I say major project because if you're sewing a, a little baby skirt that has two seams, you're not gonna use a new needle then. But um, if you're making yourself a dress, that's a project and you're going to want to change your needle each time. And you're always going to want to make sure that you have um, the correct needle for the application that you're using. On Amazon, um, I purchased this handy little thing. Um, and what it does is um, allows you to store your needles. So if you have just done a small uh, task with them and they and you can use them again you can um, slide them into the part there that um, shows you what type of needle it is so um, here I have one stored that was a universal a lightweight needle uh, fairly lightweight and then down here um, this little flower piece goes in what the one that you have in your machine currently so um, Right now, I have a ballpoint jersey size 12 needle in my machine because I was sewing some uh, jersey yesterday. So this is a handy thing. I'll put a link to that below if you're interested. Okay, so universal needles. Um, let me see, I have my whole box of needles here. Okay, so here is a universal needle. A universal needle is pointed but um, slightly rounded so that you can use it for, in theory, any application. However, um, they're not great with knits. I wouldn't use them on knits. Um, they're much better on wovens. This is your, your high performer with quilt cottons, rayons, mid-weight things. This is what um, you want to use as a universal needle. A ballpoint needle, which on the organ needle brands says has a BP right here that has a rounded tip and it allows it to slide in between the fibers and then it pierces them so that it doesn't snag them and cause bunching and cause rippling of the fabric as you sew along so uh, definitely will help your success with knits to use a ballpoint needle a denim needle or sometimes they're called jeans needles um, these are made heavy duty for uh, jeans, canvas, that kind of thing. They have a thicker, heavier shaft and um, will go through very many, many layers. 
Okay, stretch needles are a little bit different than ballpoint needles in that they are made for jerseys and lightweight knits. So if you're using a ballpoint needle on your knits and you find that you're still having some skip stitches, you may want to try a stretch needle instead. Um, embroidery needles. Those needles are, they have a longer scarf on the back that allows um, you to sew at high speeds without the thread breaking. Um, so they do though require a little bit, um, they do require embroidery thread and um, you don't wanna use them for general use um, because they are a specialty needle. A metallic needle is pretty close to the same um, but you're gonna use that with metallic thread and it's shaped specifically for a metallic thread. Again, it has a longer scarf um, to avoid um, breaking when they're, because a lot of these kind of embroidery threads and metallic threads are sewn at pretty high speeds. So you wanna have a needle that won't break the thread. A top stitching needle, um, that uh, is, has a larger eye to accommodate the top stitching thread. And um, you want to definitely use a top stitching needle to, if you use top stitching thread or else you're, um, it will continually break or cause the fibers to bunch up at the needle where it all won't fit through. Then you have a leather needle. A leather needle is another specialty needle. You're gonna want to only use that on leather. It isn't recommended for anything else. It will leave permanent holes. So you don't want to do any uh, reverse stitching like, like you do when you start and stop. You don't want to do that with a leather needle because it will leave permanent holes and so you'll end up with a lot of holes in your fabric. Um, so definitely uh, good to have on hand when you're sewing uh, faux leather or leather, um, if you're making purses, that kind of thing. You definitely want to have a leather needle and, we, and we'll get into that later. You also need a, a, a Teflon foot to keep things sliding under your, uh, under your presser foot. But um, that's a little bit more advanced down the road and we'll get into that when we get to those kind of things. Um, twin needle. I use a twin stretch needle a lot for top stitching on a hem on knits. Um, it's generally there for decorative use and they come in stretch and uh, universal. They come in all the various types, but I use a uh, twin stretch needle, which acts similar to a cover stitch machine, although not near as slick as a cover stitch machine. Um, but you can get away with using it on uh, the hem of a t-shirt or the hem of a, any kind of a knit dress or top. It's two rows of top stitching that stretches. So um, that works really well with knits. So I highly recommend that as well. So another quality of the needles are their size. And there are two ways, um, two numbers usually when you buy needles, it'll say, uh, for example, this one says 9014. So when you um, look at those two numbers, it doesn't mean two different things. They're both sizes. Uh, the larger number is a European number and the smaller number is a US number. So um, they're just basically the same thing. It's just what you're used to seeing. Um, so a size eight is also a size 60 European. Um, you use those for really lightweight fabrics, chiffon, uh, georgette, uh, organza, tulle, that kind of thing. You, you use a really lightweight needle. Um, for a size 70 or 10 needle is for uh, silky apparel fabrics like uh, some of your silky polyesters, um, silks, um, ra some rayons. Um, you want to use a uh, 70 or 10. An 80 or 12 is the most common size. That's your workhorse um, that works well on quilting cotton and anything that's of that mid weight, um, like a, even a ranch chalet. Some of them can be thick enough for that. Um, 90, 14 is a mid weight needle or heavy, mid weight to heavy. So you'd use that on, on like your silk dupianis, your corduroy, um, some light, lighter weight um, trouser fabrics like 
not denim, but um, you know, like gabardines, um, those kind of things, you would use um, a 90-14. A 100 or 15 um, is a heavy fabrics, and um, that would be your denim needle or your jeans needle. Um, you wanna use that on canvas, um, denim, twill, that kind of thing. Um, a 110 or an 18 is a very heavy duty needle. Um, that's for things like tapestry, some upholstery, um, very, very heavy weight. You might use that on um, some, I use sometimes upholstery fabrics to make purses and bags. So um, that's when I would pull out that needle. Um, a 120 or 19 needle would be for the very heaviest things like boat canvas or um, luggage tags, that kind of thing. So um, if you um, need to refer, I actually made a sheet for you that has pretty much the information I just talked about. You can get that and you can keep it handy so that um, you can judge what type of needle you should be using for your projects that are coming up. Now we have different types of thread. Um, most of the time in your garment sewing, you're gonna use good old Dual Duty Plus, or that's one brand, or Guterman um, as another brand of just the uh, polyester thread. Um, I think it's like core spun polyester. And it, it's very strong. It does not shrink uh, when you wash it. That's something you do have to think about. You haven't washed your, you can pre-wash your fabric, but you can't pre-wash your thread. So if you use cotton thread, you have to be very careful that the thread doesn't shrink, causing your garment to be all puckery and weird. Um, so polyester thread, that's what I use 90% of the time. Um, you have cotton thread. Cotton thread um, is 100% cotton. Uh, it tends to um, be a little bit thicker. Um, it can be difficult though when you're buying cotton thread to tell the different quality of it because it all kind of looks the same. It can be a low quality and still look kind of good because it's kind of fuzzy. Um, it has a lot of lint, so you want to be really careful with, um, with cotton thread. Um, filament polyester is kind of like fishing line and I think a, the best example that I have of that is this invisible thread um, which is crazy fun to work with. It's great but it's not quite I don't think as strong as the polyester thread but it is um, it's kind of the, the strands want to do what they want to do. They curl on you and all kinds of things, but they do work really well. Um, it is uh, great for sewing on um, uh, lace appliques, um, any kind of uh, beading type thing that you want to sew on without the thread showing. Um, I sometimes will use that um, when I'm just like applying lace to a hem or something like that and it does work really well um something you kind of need to have nearby but you don't use it a lot um, one of the disadvantages though of the of this is that you can play havoc with your thread tension or your um, tension on your sewing machine so you don't have to adjust for it because it's a lighter weight. And like I said, it kind of curls and goes where it wants and comes unthreaded and you can't tell if it's threaded because it's invisible. And um, so it can be a bear to work with, but it is a it is good for what it's good for. Um, also top stitching thread. Um, top stitching thread is thicker than normal thread and it's meant to be seen. It does not get lost down in the fibers. It stays on top. This is regular jeans top stitching jeans top stitching thread that I use. Um, definitely need to use a top stitch needle uh, if you use this. Um, there are double needles that are made for jeans, so they have a larger eye um, for top stitching thread. So just an FYI, if you look for that, you can find those needles and they make top stitching a double row on jeans a lot, lot easier. Um, other thread types, I, I made a sheet for you um, I don't have examples of all of these types, but um, there are several many different types of thread. I did make a handout for your um, 
for reference. Um, a little bit, a little glossary of some thread terms that you hear. You hear the uh, mercenized, and that's just, um, it's been immersed in some caustic solution to make it to swell and um, the dye penetrates it better. So a mercer mercerized thread will have more um, enhanced color usually. Um, a gassed uh, thread will have been passed through a, like a flame and it um, causes uh, it to get rid of the lint so you don't have as much lint production and um, it's, it's shinier. So that's a, a, a quality with that one. Um, so there you have it. Those are the types of thread and um, when you would use them. Um, I will, to my best ability, um, help you as we go through our projects, I will help you know which needles we're going to use depending on what fabric you have. Um, for this first project, we're, I'm gonna encourage you to get a quilting cotton just because it, it's the easiest fabric in the world to work with. And so I think that's where we need to start. So I would encourage you to have the size 11 or 12 universal needles on hand. Um, and they would be, that would be a, a wonderful needle. That's probably all you would need for this first project. So, uh, some other fun stuff. Um, you can find all kinds of different bobbin holders um, to attach your bobbin to your um, thread. So you don't lose, you, have to, you don't have to throw away thread. Um, this kind kind of goes in the hole there and hold your bobbin on there. Um, this kind is kind of neat. It's just a, like a, almost like a hairpin. And then you put it in there and it holds your thread with your bob, or your bobbin with your thread. These are called peels and they wrap around and hold your thread from un, unrolling uh, um, when it's in a drawer or with the rack or whatever. Um, I don't always use them. Um, Guterman thread is really nice because uh, it has usually a, a groove here that you can uh, secure it down. So it's really good. Um, if you have any questions about needles or thread, please post them in the comments below. Next week, we are going to start our sew along. So in the meantime, think about um, what you're what fabric you would choose for uh, the cadence dress. I'll put a picture of the um, pattern right here again. I would like you to think about um, what kind of quilting cotton. Um, it doesn't have to say quilting cotton, but you know, just a regular cotton, 100% cotton fabric. You can start looking for what you might like. Um, I'm going to make a maxi version and I probably will use quilting cotton as well. So, um, so yeah, start thinking about that and uh, dream a little bit of what you would like it to look like. Um, when we come back next week after on uh, next Friday, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about types of fabric. Um, and also we're going to make sure we have gathered, everything you need for the, the cadence project, which isn't a lot, basically. Um, you don't need a whole lot of other things besides your fabric thread. Um, you may need a little bit of interfacing, which I will talk about next week about what interfacing is, because that's a whole other subject. Um, I'll give you the short version next week, and then we'll, one, one time we'll have a uh, the full description of what interfacing does and different types and all that kind of thing. So. Um, there's a lot to learn about interfacing. Um, not something you ever, ever, ever want to skip. May I just put that, put that out there? Don't skip it because it's very important. It can make a difference between a garment looking uh, dowdy and home sewn versus looking professional and crisp. So definitely never, ever skip the interfacing step of your projects. Okay, so if you have questions about needles or thread, post them below. Um, I hope you're... Um, gathering all your supplies that you need. Um, I've seen a few tags on 
on uh, Instagram with uh, Friday Sewing School. So be sure and as you gather things, if you want to post a picture of your fabric uh, that you like um, or you want to ask a question, use the hashtag Friday Sewing School. And um, I check Instagram regularly, so I will look there as well for questions. Also here in the comments, you can post your questions. I'm very excited of where this journey is going to take us. Um, I think that uh, you're going to be very uh, pleased with your end result um, with your cadence dresses. So with that, I will wish you a very good weekend and happy sewing. See you Tuesday for some sewing chat.